What would happen if a pump action shotgun and a very precise bolt action rifle had a baby? And what if it were made by the oldest firearms company in the world, Beretta, who hasn't had a bolt action rifle in decades? Today, we're announcing the US launch of the Beretta BRX-1. I've spent the last four days here shooting it, and I'm gonna give you the full review. Now, the headline that everybody's gonna be talking about is that this is a straight pull rifle. But my question coming into this is just, is it a good gun? And so we're gonna ignore to the end about the straight pull stuff, because that's really just a cherry on top. Let's see if it'll shoot. Let's talk about what makes this gun interesting because it offers quite a lot of very unique features that I just haven't seen before. But this is not a hype train. We are going to get into some pros and cons of this gun later. Plus, we are gonna talk about the elephant in the room, the straight pull. But first, just what does this offer as a gun? So first of all, 9% of you just rejoice right now because this thing is completely ambidextrous. I don't mean you can order it in right hand or left hand configurations. I mean it's completely ambidextrous. You can just swap the bolt handle from one side to the other. I did it myself, it's like a 45 second process, really easy. The cool thing about that is you can have one nice hunting rifle for your family. And if your son who's a lefty, like Ruger is my son, then you gotta swap, then you just swap the bolt handle over and you're ready to go. Then the other cool thing that I like about it is you can choose where it ejects to because you got a full pass through right here. And so I can set the bolt handle on the right but eject the spent brass on the left. That, that's big for me because I always pick up my brass. I don't want to leave trash on public land, but also, you know, it's not 2019 anymore. Brass is expensive. And so when I'm pulling out my spent case, I can have my left hand on one side and bolt handle on the other. Normally with a rifle, I've got to like do one of these things to catch the brass. Three position safety for those of you who care. The safety, you know, you press up on the top and you'll go into fire press down on the bottom and you'll go into safe. And then third position, you just make little press on the bottom. And now what that means is it's still on safe. It cannot fire, but I can open the bolt. So when you get back to the truck, you can remove your bolt while you're on safety. Toolless trigger adjustment. You can go from, I think, three and a half to two and a half to two pounds. And the two pound trigger is where I keep it set. That's where it comes factory. There are two buttons on the side of the magazine. I really like that. You, normally it's just a little clip on the front or the back to take the magazine out, but hunters always complain that you could easily bump that and lose a magazine. It's never actually happened to me while hunting, but I hear about people doing it all the time. And so it's flush fit, but you press two buttons so it's really not going to come out accidentally. Also, I like the orange. I think it just looks kind of cool. But also, if you drop the mag, it's really easy to find it. Quick insert, because I forgot it in this list. This is also a switch barrel rifle. You can take the barrel on and off, and there's gonna be less than one MOA of shift every time you put it back on. You can also get multiple barrels. So you could have your 6.5 Creedmoor barrel and a 300 Win Mag barrel for the exact same rifle, one gun to do everything for your deer hunt, elk hunt. But, pff, whatever specs you want to see the coolest thing about this gun i'm just going to black out the screen maybe we'll see like i don't know something very zen here because listen to this oh oh that brings a great joy oh i love that sound i in fact i liked it so much shooting over the last couple days i set it as my text tune so when i get a text now i hear it and if anybody ever texted me i hear it We'll take a break for one second to thank today's video sponsor, which is Magic Spoon. It's helping me to work on my health goals for 2024. So my goal is actually to bench press 300 pounds by the time I turn 40 and I got a ways to go. But a high protein cereal like this is helping me to slowly get there. I got a ways to go, but Magic Spoon is helping me to eat better and get my nutrition on point. You know, this one has 13 grams of protein and all of these, they have a whole bunch of flavors and they're actually pretty good. They have peanut butter, cocoa, fruity, and frosted. All of them are high protein, keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, wheat free, naturally flavored, and totally delicious childlike cereal for grown ups. Check it out at magicspoon.com backfire 
to get $5 off with coupon code BACKFIRE. So if you're trying to improve yourself and get to some health goals, magicspoon.com slash backfire. See if I can reach my own goal. All right, accuracy. This is the one that everybody wants to know about how well a gun shoots. So I have only had one load to be shooting this with, and that's the Sako Power Blade, 162 grains, copper ammo. But it's been shooting really good with it. We've been getting MOA groups. A little bit less than MOA is what I would call it normally. Let's try it out. We're just going to show. It never works out as well on camera as it does in practice. Um, but this thing, what the crap? So I walked in. We're at the FTW Sam Ranch uh, where they do a lot of long range shooting classes and stuff. And they're like, put this on. I'm like, what the? Heck? I've been at a lot of long range shooting places and I've never been issued an oven mitt. Uh, so the idea for this is it goes on your left hand to curl up under the gun so that you can support the gun. Now, if you just have your hand, you start to see your pulse and stuff in the stock. It's not as steady. And so this just dampens that vibration. And I, I thought, dude, I'm not using that. That's dumb. I just want a sandbag. But it's actually been really convenient. I don't know if it's for like the most precise way to shoot, but for a lot of the positional stuff we've been doing, it's been great. Again, this isn't a perfect bench rest position we're in, but let's see what we can do. All righty, see how we do. Looks like we had one, two, three all touching and one just out. Great, happy with that. Hey, you guys asked pretty often about the Burris Eliminator scope. It's a You're pretty left, advanced scope, frame, has a lot of cool features right, in it. My friend right. Rob from Deer Meat for Dinner is here. What's gonna up, show my us man? about it. Y'all see this guy right here? He's as cool off camera Aww. as he is on camera. Aww. That's no joke, folks. <laughs> I'm not paid by backfire. I just am telling the truth. Not that much anyway. What's up, my man? So let's look at this thing, dude. So this has been out for a couple years, but it's still not real well known. I feel like I feel like it does, still doesn't get a whole lot of press. It's under talked about, but it does more than that. I was on a depredation hunt and I had this gun. I had five bullets. Literally, with five bullets from 275 to 550 yards off sticks, I killed six does. Dude. Okay, so in the scope, I look in the scope, and is, do you have to press a button for it to range? Yep, so right here, this is a range. One on this side, one on this side. You also have a, a, a remote that you can put wherever you want. When you press the range, it automatically tells you how far, and then it gives you an orange reticle, the, the, like a uh, illuminated dot down that dot is your holdover so i used to live in idaho and you can't use these in idaho they don't allow the like electronics in the scope my but suggestion Utah is totally don't allows it. go to idaho <laughs> there you go <laughs> so, hey, solve the problem yeah cool man Thanks go to where this to me but okay let's talk about it the straight pull you're just going straight back straight forward two motions First thing I want to know is how in the world does that actually work on this rifle? And is that safe? Because won't it just blow things back? There are a lot of different designs for straight pulls. Let's go talk to one of the guys who made this gun and see how it works. Me, Ricardo. Ricky Ricardo. Lucy. <laughs> Do you watch that? <laughs> no, I love Lucy. I don't know. It's great television, man. Okay, Ricardo, how does it work? How does the bolt not come flying back at your face when you shoot, right? Because that's, you know, on a normal bolt action, you got to go up and down exactly. to lock it in. So the, the, the trick is made right here. We have a, a cam pin at the top, which basically is going to have transform one movement into two movements, actually. So you're going to have to pull and automatically you're going to also be rotating the ball head, which is a very similar system to an AR-15 lockup mechanism. So that is the trick right there. So it, it rotates as it's it coming. You don't notice like, that it is, but it's rotating, it's rotating and then it locks in. While you pull rotate, it's like as if you are manually, let's say, uh, let's say loading your AR-15. You're doing exactly the same motion, but in this case, this is not a semi-auto rifle. It's just a manual repeating because you have your handle. So you're, what I would say is like, just like an AR, but you have to reload every shot. Not, not fully semi-auto. <laughs> gotcha. Manual repeating. Join us on another Jeep conversation. Uh, Ricardo and I were just talking about in Europe that like, you guys can't get like a ton of guns in a lot of countries since so you got you got to build them to last once it's serialized too. I did notice the finish is like 
really durable for a polymer stock. Yes, we paid extra attention to the finishing. In this case, we have polymer forehand and, and stock. And but that of course, texture like really hides the stuff. The texture is uh, taken from, an, again, from another military gun. And also uh, what we did here is try to have a texting that it lasts as long as possible, that it's, uh, let's say, kind of resistant to scratch. And what we're looking is a testing that not only do that, but you also have like different uh, textures, one in the bottom for extra, let's say, grip, especially in wet conditions and everything. So this type of, uh, let's say, finishing is very good also for the overall and also aesthetic and durability of the rifle. So it shouldn't get that shiny like we see in some of the regular polymer rifles that we see in the market. How many, like, how many shots do you guys go through when you're testing it? We follow the military procedures, which in this case is uh, a lot of rounds. I can tell you with the 300 wind map, we went, uh, we shot over 100,000 rounds. 100,000 rounds? Uh, uh, 100,000 rounds of 300 Winchester Magnum just to test uh, uh, the system itself. <laughs> and uh, because we have to make sure that any product that comes out of Beretta is completely safe and everything. So, so how long does a barrel last then if you shot that many? Well, we, we didn't shoot different, yeah, different, different, guns, different yeah. guns, exactly. We took a few guns over, let's say the 5,000 mark and some of them even to 10,000 rounds just for- 5,000 uh, rounds of 300 Win Mag? 10,000, a few 10, of them did you even test to- accuracy? At five, at 5 000, one of them or a couple i don't remember exactly it was still holding one moa now this is five thousand rounds at 300 wind mag correct a lot i i believe that's part of the uh cold hammer forge process which gives uh, i would say much durability and also the whole let's say technology that we have on building the barrels when we hammer forge and then we vacuum uh, finish the barrel with the vacuum distension that is basically allowing all the let's say the 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 molecules inside the metal to be perfect aligned after such a process. That's pretty cool. Everything has pros and cons, and this rifle is no different. There are four cons that I see on this rifle. First is the grip angle, and this one maybe is a, an especially bad offender. I feel like the pistol grip is way back there. If you look at just my normal trigger address, that's it. I mean, I've got to go like that to get to the trigger. And so when your finger is at this angle, to pull and your thumbs across the stock it does that right and when you're coming across that's just very likely to just tweak the gun the other way and could potentially cause some accuracy issues now having said that it, i was able to shoot it pretty well but i really didn't like that trigger angle good news is for 25 bucks they're adding a vertical pistol grip that you can get with this that's available at launch Number two, the trigger is good. I like that it's light, but it does have some notable, notable, noticeable creep. You'll feel er, er, before it shoots, just very, very slight. Number three, this is just a little bit heavier at seven pounds, four ounces. So it's really not, not bad. It doesn't feel as heavy because the weight is very concentrated in the center. It has a nice balance point. Um, fairly close to the action and when they when a gun is nicely balanced it just doesn't feel as heavy but it is seven pounds four ounces having said that um you know I, I shoot a heavier gun a little bit better and it's not so heavy that i wouldn't take it into the mountains so the reason that i wanted to organize this video talking about just the rifle as a rifle before we got into the straight pull stuff is i really felt like the benefit of a straight pull is just speed right? And I always felt like, oh, I'll save my precious calories to lift up and come back. Like, does it really matter? And, you know, when you're in a situation like this, this place is incredible. It's like a mega million dollar amusement park to hunting. So they have like these moving things to simulate getting shot by, a, getting attacked by a Cape Buffalo that you got to shoot at and stuff and elephants and stuff popping up. It's super cool. So to use the straight pull on that, like, okay, yeah, it's faster. But I felt like in my hunting, you know, I, that's not really the stuff that I do most of the time. And then as we started to shoot it, including, you know, long range, very precision type shooting, I realized pretty quickly like, oh, this is actually a pretty nice upgrade because when you're in the scope and you're racking in a second shot, it just doesn't jostle the gun all around. You're right in there. It's a good solid gun with a lot of benefits in its own right. And then you kind of get that cherry on top. Honestly, it's gonna be a little bit hard to go back to a bolt after shooting this for four days. It's a cool feature. Well, it has been a few weeks since I recorded the rest of this video, and I wanna record my final thoughts on the Beretta BRX-1. 
First of all, this is an awesome family gun because one, it is durable. It isn't going to last your whole life. It's switch ambidextrous. And if you've got lefties around, no problem. You switch barrel so you can have your 6.5 Creedmoor and your 300 Win Mag in the exact same platform that you know really, really well. And it can be that versatile gun for deer or elk, whatever you want to use it for. And it has a lot of innovative features, like just the two buttons on the magazine so it, it doesn't come out. Um, the straight pull, man, I wasn't sure if I would care about it. And ever since then, I have just missed it on uh, not having that gun. I need that gun because it's so nice to just not have the scope get jostled around as you're moving that bolt. It's just like barely a movement after after shooting each shot. And so you can stay in the scope a lot better. Overall, I'm very, very impressed with the Beretta BRX-1. This is a cool platform and it should be called a platform because another cool thing about it is because it has, you know, a one piece receiver there. And so you just have the tiny little fore end of the stock and the, then the butt stock, but they're going to make all kinds of different versions of that. You know, you want wood, whatever. Uh, they have all kinds of cool things that they'll do with that platform. And so it's just a very versatile rifle. And I'm excited to have it come into the U.S. Beretta really knocked it out of the park with this one.